Hello people and welcome back to my channel. This is the Lacey Peterson case part two. Let's uh, touch base. I left off at um, letting you guys know that seven people that day claimed that they saw Lacey walking um, after she took her dog for a walk, seven people. And also around the same time that when those seven people saw them, Scott Peterson was making a phone call from the Berkeley Marina saying that um, he, you know, leaving a message on Lacey's thing. So. To me, that's very strong evidence that he could be innocent. Um, they just overturned his death penalty part of his case, but upheld his conviction. So it means he stays in prison for the rest of his life, but he's not going to be sentenced to death. Um, so let's get into it shortly. You know, after Lacey had went missing, Scott comes home. He realizes uh, after a split second when he hears a message that Sharon's husband, Ron, left that he needed them to bring them as in Lacey and Scott to bring like whipped cream. So once he hear once Scott hears that he's thinking, Well I thought Lacey was with them, so he calls. And that's when the first time around five PM or five ten PM is when they find out that um Lacey is missing. So then after he calls them he calls the police. So Sharon Rocha um comes over there, they go searching through the park, it's said in Sharon's book, which by the way, I'll put down in the description box. Sharon has a book called For Lacey, and I get all of my books from Audible, I listen to them. I am, I have to listen to my books because I'm dyslexic, so I have a little bit of a learning disability when it comes to um, understanding certain things. Um, so Audible helps me out a whole lot. No, they're not sponsoring this yet, but one day they will. So back to Lacey. Right now she's been missing from since this morning. Everybody's freaking out. Sharon's running through the park. Because let me back up. In the book she did say that Lacey would go running in the park. And sometime two months before she went missing. She started getting really sick and nauseous. Um, when she would go to the park. So to the fact that she got so dizzy that she ended up stop running through the park and stop going walking Mackenzie at the park. So her mom knew this. We're not sure if Scott knew this, but we do know her mom did say that this was legit. So police comes. As she's walking through the park, she sees, she runs into a doctor and she's like, please help my, my daughter's pregnant. She's out here somewhere. We think she may have fell. And he was like, well, let me, I'm a surgeon. Let me call you know, area hospitals, I might be able to find out for you. And he does that and they hadn't found, they didn't know where she was at this point. That did, that came through as nothing. So then, um, of course, the police come. That night, Detective Rokini comes through. He ends up um, asking Scott to, you know, come in the house and they talk through things. Scott's going over the same story, saying exactly what's, what happened, exactly what was going on. Um, what he did that, that morning that he got up, Lacey was, um, Lacey was up before him and ate something. He ate cereal. He ended up, um, getting things ready, uh, loading three umbrellas in the back of the truck, um, made her water so she could have, um, made her water so she could basically mop the floors. And this caught me as odd. Why would she need to mop the floors if, unless she was meticulous about her home, which I think she was, so I can see a need of needing to mop your floors even though the cleaning lady did it the day before. But being that pregnant and you're having somebody else do it, I just don't see somebody doing it unless they're just very anal about their house. Or, you know, she was having a big breakfast the next day and people were coming over and she needed to go to the store and do all those kind of things too. So Scott said he remembers something on being on TV that she was watching about Martha Stewart and lemon meringue cookies. And then he left. He said he traveled and went to his, you know, um, that's what he was basically telling Brokini. And that's in my first video. I'll link that down at the bottom. You guys can go back and look over that. So Brokini's in there. And from the moment it said that Brokini, you know, honed in on Scott Peterson, he thought he was guilty from the jump. He just wasn't acting right. And you hear that a lot in this case, that he wasn't acting right, that something was wrong off with him. And... 
So Lacey's still missing. Weeks go by. Weeks go by, and she's still not found. Her mother's freaking out. Right at this in the in the media, she's standing by Scott. She said, Scott would not do this. He's a part of the family. We need to focus on Lacey. Basically trying to get the media to come back and support him. It, or a, a spontaneous like meeting for the for the media. Um, in walks in a blonde headed lady and everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's this? And then I'm thinking when I first seen it that she's like another cop. And then she starts speaking and she's saying her and Scott had been, she was Scott's mistress. She did not know about Lacey. She just found out all this when she seen him in the paper, um, seen, seen him, his picture in the paper. A little backstory on Amber Fry. She was a massage therapist and she ran into Scott through her friend who they had at the time, her and Scott had been dating for two months. Her and Scott's been dating since November, and she did not know that he was married. She didn't know. So he, so she's basically doing a press conference saying, you know, hey, I didn't know. He did tell me back in the beginning of December that his wife was no longer with him, that she was missing. Boom. The moment she said that, I think that's what sealed the deal for Scott Peterson because nobody could believe of a liar. <laughs> Y'all ain't never seen or heard a liar all day, like your whole life, just a liar. I know a lot of liars, but I don't know that many murderers. You know what I'm saying? Like, right there, they assumed he was guilty. They didn't look past anything. Eventually, they end up getting um, Scott on trial for first degree murder, and he's found guilty. And what sealed the deal was uh, Amber Fry's tapes, because while he was supposed to be at, um, a candlelight visual, he's on the phone talking to Amber Fry, talking about how he was in Paris and he missed her and he's at his wife's candlelight visual to find her. What I honestly think is that he was cheating. He was already detached from Lacey. I don't think enough to kill her, but I do think he was detached enough to basically not love her like he did. I think he had love for her and didn't want to see nothing happen to her, but I don't think he was in love with her. I think that he was in love with Amber. There's too much evidence. People need to open their eyes. And when they argue with me on this, I'm thinking the entire time. What about the seven people? Do you think that was just somebody else? This case was publicized everywhere. This case, the media convicted him before he was ever, he had to move different counties. Just like, what does this sound familiar to you? If you watched any of my thing, this sounds just like the David Cam situation. The exact same. The exact same, he had to move media, ruins cases like these because they taint the jury pool. And this is exactly what Scott Peterson had. Scott Peterson had one person on the jury that was basically like, he did not do this. And somehow that guy is the only guy that got thrown off. But other people, they had a tainted jury where they would come in, say whatever they need to say to get on the jury, just to fry him. There was a lady that was missing a baby. You see her in a lot of the... Um, what is it? The documentary they have on Hulu, uh, the Lacey Peterson story. You see that red hair, the bright red hair girl, the actual color red. Um, you see her talking about how she lost the baby and she was a juror. That, you can't have that kind of juror, jury. You can't have it. So I think that there's just too much. All the the circumstantial evidence is that because this is a circumstantial evidence and so in april of 2003 her body was found or well not her body her torso was found shortly about a mile away from her torso was a was a baby this is how they was able to convict or get scott for first degree murder because he was out from the time Lacey went missing till all the way around April or so, I think around March he got, um, he was, he looked like he was fleeing, honey. He was, uh, got caught down by San Diego. He says he was golfing with his dad and he dyed his hair and stuff because he didn't want the media to find him. The media, they knew, D, they was doing DNA testing on Lacey and Connor right after they got found in April, um, on in San Francisco Bay. It's the same bay that he was fishing in. So this is why a lot of people are like, common sense, Brandy. Yes, but this case was publicized everywhere. So what if, let me give a theory. What if Lacey really did go walking that day? Okay, 
my first theory. What if she was abduct abducted, okay? And they held her. And maybe it was for a baby thing. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But what if they did? are the ones that killed her? Where are you going to put the body after you've done seen on TV? The husband's, going, the husband's a creep anyway. He's cheating on her. She didn't stand a chance. So the killer's probably thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to throw her into San Francisco Bay. And they're going to assume it was him because everybody thinks he's guilty anyway. It was too publicized. It was too publicized. So that's my first theory. My second theory is that around the same, on the same day of the 24th, the people across the street's house was broken into. Um, maybe Lacey ran into them people because it was said by a neighbor that she seen the people standing out there around that time, the same time in the morning that she would have, that Lacey would have went walking. I guess we won't ever know, but what I do what I do want you guys to think about and hypothesize in your head, do you honestly believe that Scott Peterson murdered his wife and son because he wanted to be with Amber Fry? Do you honestly believe that it was a serial killer? I'm sorry, it's just too many coincidences for me. And that is why I bet you he got the death penalty case taken off. And I think in the future, eventually, we are going to find out. It said that the, um, the autopsy of Lacey Peterson was undetermined and there was no evidence of man-made wounds besides the fact that her head and all or one part of her limbs were missing so she was so she was missing from here i think here a leg so they think that scott peterson tied these weights to her and dropped her in the river or in the bay and when they dropped when he dropped her in the bay you know after a while the weights are coming down and holding her down and then they break her free because her body starts to tear in. or somebody chopped her up like that that's the only evidence right there that seems logical against scott was the way that they made it sound right there that's it that the murder part but then they actually brought out his boat in the middle of the other In the middle of the bay, the same size of his boat, in a picture of him trying to knock a, throw a body off of it, especially a pregnant body. It's gonna be a little heavier. No offense, but he's uh, so they tried to do that, and every time he took on too much water, and the boat would sink. That's how small the boat was. It's common sense, though. I mean, it's just it's saying that the fetus was expelled from the body. So the images, it's saying the Im images accompanied by expert testimony were shown Thursday at the trial. It said the body was very soft and it came apart very easily when they found it. The fetus had not been born before Lacey's death and was expelled from her decaying body, meaning that she died first and then the baby died and then it came out of her body. Because basically the fetus's body was in better shape than her body. Meaning that it was in her stomach for a while before she was, you know, her body was found. So he, Connor was protected by her uterus and expelled probably weeks after Lacey's body was put in the water. But here's my thing. 
I honestly think that she didn't, there's no way for them to know. I have not heard yet a time around the time that she would have died. Of course, it would be a slam dunk for the prosecution to say that she died that day on the 24th around that time. But there's actually no proof of at all. She could have actually died two months before, which had been January, way after Scott would have seen her if somebody picked her up and did this to her and held her and kidnapped her. Maybe kidnapped her because they didn't know what to do with her because she seen them do something and they weren't trying to go back to prison. But now they're not... Now, if I go with the theory of the rock, you know, the people that robbed the house across the street, that makes more sense to me. Because what are they going to do? Holy shit, now they got this body. Now they got this pregnant girl and they got to keep her alive. And she's already seen their face. So, either way, now they got for kidnap and they have to let her go. But how would they know to exactly go to Berkeley Marie? I mean, I do understand that the Bay, uh, San Francisco Bay is a big area. So, if you want to make something go missing, you want to do it in there because of the currents. I just, so a lot of it, um, a lot of it's just, it's circumstantial. A lot of people think that the baby, now the defense said the baby was born after Lacey was, you know, Lacey was, um, the baby was born and then Lacey was killed. So basically the prosecutors during the, during the trial try to say that, you know, Lacey was killed on the 20, uh, on or around the 24th and then dumped her weighted body into the bay. The remains of Lacey and her fetus washed up along the bay April 2003. Not far from where Scott launched his bow. He didn't do it. That there, is, there was a serial killer. Peterson's husband, Scott Peterson, currently sits on death row in San Quentin Prison. There was not any witnesses to seeing somebody that looks just as Lacey. I wouldn't, I would honestly think that he was guilty, but since there <laughs> was seven people and these little bitty details, like Scott said the day that he left her, that she was sitting on the bench in her bathroom, curling her hair like her sister Amy taught her to do the night before. Her mother said Stacey, or that Lacey did not have a bench. He don't know, she don't know what she's talking about, but in the crime scene photos, it's there with with the extension cord stretching across the bathroom to reach the outlet. The cleaner said that she had cleaned that up before, so it shouldn't have been like that when they came in to do pictures. Now, of course, they did a warrant and everything, and Scott Peterson was eventually found guilty of the murder of Lacey Peterson and his son, Connor. And still to this day, there are diehard fans, <laughs> fans of Scott Peterson, there's diehard people that think he's guilty. Don't ever let him out. Like... People are really pissed about, which I understand they have, they have that right to be upset. That was a pregnant woman whose life was just snuffed out. And then what's sad, just like many cases like these, you have people that focus on the killer, the killer and not the victim. People got to remember that Lacey Peterson was a victim, her son was a victim her mother has pain every day now her real dad has passed away her stepfather ron had passed away already and it's just sharon lacy's mom who has to live in his and her brother that has to live on with the pain it's very sad that a, a young woman lost her life and that her son they they don't get to have a life and I'm hoping that justice, if he's guilty, that justice will stay the way it is and for Sharon's sake. And if he's not for Sharon's sake, I hope that they find the right killer. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters is finding the person who actually did this or if keeping the person that did it in jail. I want to thank you guys for tuning in because without you, I wouldn't even be here every day. <laughs> I'm trying to edit videos and learn my way through the thing, you know, getting everything done. I appreciate you. Go on and like and subscribe this. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. I love you.